congratulations, you got the house. So now what happens? And what exactly does it mean to be pending? If we haven't met, my name's Katie Crawford and I'm a realtor that specializes in the Spruce Grove, Stony Plain and Parkland County areas. I love helping buyer clients and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the steps that happen after your offer is accepted. The sale isn't final once the sellers accept your offer. Written into the offer is a time period typically of 10 days to two weeks where you have time to satisfy your conditions to make sure that you're willing and able to complete the transaction, otherwise known as being pending. So what are the common conditions? Financing, property inspection, sale of buyer's property, and condo doc review are typically the most common. Once you're pending, there's also some tasks that you'll have to have completed before you can waive your conditions. First thing is your realtor will usually send the offer and property details to your mortgage broker so they can start putting your financing together. You may be pre-approved, but the lender has to do their due diligence to ensure the property that you're buying is worth the amount that you're paying. They may want to schedule an appraisal as well, so just be aware of this. Next, we'll schedule the property inspection because in this busy market, I wanna make sure that that inspection is scheduled early because the good inspectors are busy. So it's important to get that slotted in as soon as possible. After the inspection, the inspector will give you a report with all of the deficiencies of the property. And then we go back to negotiate with the sellers if there's anything that's glaring or unlivable. Depending on the type of property, the inspection fee is usually around $550 and up. Now you'll go ahead and submit your deposit. Your realtor will have some advice on the easiest way to do this, as well as the date that it's due. And don't worry, the deposit is refundable if for whatever reason you decide not to go ahead with the purchase. The next step is to secure a real estate lawyer. Unlike other provinces where you could use a notary, in Alberta, it's the law to have a lawyer oversee the transfer of property from seller to buyer to ensure that the contract is enforceable. Make sure you have some funds set aside for this and your realtor will be able to give you an idea of what those fees will cost based on the price of your home. Next, we get the final financing approval and it's a great moment when the mortgage broker or specialist gives us the go ahead that we can waive the financing condition because usually it's the final piece of the puzzle. Then we can waive conditions. Once your conditions are satisfied, we'll send the sellers your signed conditions waiver and make the house yours. Before possession day, the lawyer you chose will contact you uh, so that you can meet with them to sign the final paperwork. The final step is key release day. And this is the most exciting day because it's the culmination of all your hard work. Your agent will be notified that your mortgage funds have been transferred and you're ready to take possession. This happens around noon typically, so don't schedule any movers or technicians for the morning of your possession day just to be safe. So there you have it, a brief overview of what happens after your offer is accepted. Now that you have a feel for the process, you might be thinking, I could easily do this on my own. Why bother hiring a buyer's agent? Well, stay tuned for my next video, Buying Without a Realtor, What Can Go Wrong? If you're interested in buying a home in the greater Edmonton area, let's chat. Contact me for a buyer consultation today. And as always, leave a comment below.